So this video is about recursion. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be doing it in Java. You can do it in Python and C++ as well, but I'm going to be doing it in Java. So, really quickly, there are three main things you can do with methods. You can overload them, you can override them, or you can do recursion with them. This video is recursion. Overriding will come sometime later, and overloading was previously on the channel. Okay, that kind of sums up the three things you can do with methods. Overriding, I'm going to push it off because I have not covered inheritance, which is a fundamental core concept of OLP, similar to polymorphism. And you kind of need to know a little bit of object-oriented programming and inheritance to do method overriding. Well, that's the easiest way how I like to explain it with the use of inheritance. Therefore, I will not do that right now. I'll probably push it off until we start with object-oriented programming and inheritance. Okay, so let's start with our main objective or our main thing for today. Recursion. What is it? Well, recursion is a process when a method makes a call to itself. That is simply what recursion is. A process when a method makes a call to itself. A method that involves recursion is known as a recursive method. You'll hear me say it, you'll hear a lot of other people say it. Just know that a recursive method is a method that involves recursion. Okay. All we good to go. So there are two main things that you have to understand with recursion. Every recursive method will contain two things, a base case and a recursive case. The base case is a conditional with a Boolean expression that halts the recursion that's supposed to be an end by the way when true that's simply what a base case is a conditional with a boolean expression that halts the recursion when true this will make a lot more sense when i go over the when i go over examples of recursive methods and i cover them that will come later in this video or tutorial. So, the recursive case. The case that pushes towards the base case. And this is your method call inside your method. So it's the recursion that's actually happening. That's why it's called the recursive case. Pushes towards the base case. So that's it. Those are kind of the three things with recursion. Know what recursion is. Know the two main things in a recursive method, the base case and the recursive case. If the recursive case does the opposite, it pushes away from the base case, you're going to reach infinite recursion. So let's type that in. Recursive case moves away from the base case. So basically, infinite recursion is just when the recursive case it never reaches the base case. That's what I mean by move away. So moves away, never reaches. From it never reaches the base case. And that's when infinite recursion occurs. And this will generate, or I should say Java will generate, a stack overflow error. Not the website, but the error. 
And a stack overflow error is pretty much when Java does not have enough memory to place another method call to the stack. And that's a stack overflow error. So that's recursion. Don't have enough room, so I'm just gonna erase all this. Be sure to pause the video if you wanna look at this stuff and note it down. I'm gonna erase it because I don't have enough space. Okay, so let's take a look at one of the most notable examples of recursion, and that is the factorial. The factorial is the most prominent example of recursion. So in English, this just means an exclamation mark, right? But in math, it means factorial, which just means you multiply the number by all the numbers below it except for zero. Five times four times three times two times one is equivalent to five factorial or five with an exclamation mark. And that is simply 120, right? So how do we code this in Java? Well, what we could do is we could do five times five minus one times four minus one times three minus one times two minus one. That, does that ring any bells? So, any anything that involves recursion can also be done iteratively. That is a key concept to understand. Anything done recursively can also be done Done iteratively for and while loops. So whenever I say Italy, iteratively, I just mean for and while loops. That's it. Anything done recursively can also be done iteratively. We just do it recursively because it's less time consuming. Recursion makes your code more simpler to understand, but there is a lot, it does become complicated at first. Hopefully by the end of this video, should ring some bells, should make sense on how recursion works. Okay, so let's do a while loop that will accomplish factorial. So how can we do this in a while? What we could do is first we have to make a method. Let's make a factorial method. And we'll pass in an integer of n, right? Well, the biggest thing we can do is we can first start with making some temporary storage for an integer of an answer. And we're gonna make that equal to one. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in a loop. Just know that recursion is another way of a loop. Recursion is just a loop. Note that concept down. I have not said it earlier, but that's the biggest thing I want you to make sure you know. Recursion is just a loop. So let's go back to our, what we're talking about. So first we're gonna talk about how we can do it iteratively. And then we're gonna see that it's a little bit more easier to do it recursively than it is to do iteratively. So, how would we do it? Well, just remember that factorial means we're multiplying all the numbers below that number, but not zero. So what does that mean in Java? Well, that's just while n is less than one, right? And then what we can do is we can multiply our answer by our n. Right? You just multiply by n. And then, what do we have to do next? We have to decrease n, right? And then, we can return our answer. Ending the execution of our iterative method. And that is how you can do it iteratively. I mean, yeah, iteratively. There we go. That is how you do the factorial method iteratively. So, Let's say we're passing in this five to the method. 
we're making our answer equal one. And while five is less than one, five is less than one. So that condition is true, right? We're, keep, we're multiplying our answer by our n. So one times five is five. And then what we're doing is we're gonna decrement it. So n is now four, right? We're gonna do the same thing again. So now we know that answer is five. And n is four. And that is 20. Answer is now 20. And n is now three. And we repeat that process. Answer is now 60, n is two. And then answer is 120, n is one. And then finally, we stop. Our answer is 120. Because one is no longer less than one. And that is how we can do it iteratively. Now we're gonna go on to something to recursion. How can we do the same thing recursively? So first thing we need to do, we need to make our method. Okay. So the first thing that we need in our recursive method is we need a base case. There we go. Hopefully that should make some sense. Gonna draw a line here. Okay. So let's start. So the first thing that we need in our recursive method is we need our base case. Well, our base case is when it stops, right? Here, as you saw, our case was if one is less than one, right? So it stops after one. So that's what our base case is gonna be. Our recursion will stop once n is equal to one. And what's this is gonna do? We're just gonna make it return one, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna return, here's where things get a little bit interesting, n, which is, and then we're going to make the recursive call n minus 1, right? And that seems like, how would you compute that? Like, Java, would, that wouldn't make any sense. However, it does make sense. So how this works is that we're going to pass a 5 into this method, right? If n equals to 1, which it does not equal 1, we're going to make this, we're going to return 5, we're going to multiply it by my recursive method, and we're going to make that 4. What's going to happen now? Well, a 4 is now going to be passed into the method. And we're going to repeat the process again. As you can see, the recursive method has a recursive call right there. It's calling itself. And you can see that because the method names match. So we're passing into 4 now. 4 does not equal 1. So we move to the next part. Four times my RM three. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pass into three. Three does not equal one, so that's false. I mean three to three to yeah, three does not equal one, that's false. Three times my recursive method two. And then two times my recursive method one. And now we're gonna pass in, finally, a one into our method. And since one equals one, this is just gonna return. That's it. So that is two, that is three, that is four, that is five. We're gonna multiply them all together and we get 120. And that is recursion. Okay, so unfortunately my Eclipse wasn't working. So I'm here using VS Code. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're, today here we're tasked with writing a recursive method that will sum all the numbers from one to a thousand. Okay, not bad. So we already have our code kind of set up for us. We have a recursive method right here. So we know that because it's a recursive method, it must contain a recursive call. So the first thing that we need to do with any recursive method is we need to write our base case. 
So we know that we have to write a recursive method that will sum all the numbers from one to a thousand. So our base case is gonna be, if n equals to one, then we're just gonna return one. Remember that every recursive method must have a base case. So that's our base case. The recursion will stop once n equals one. And then after that, what we're gonna do, let me move this comment out of the way. There we go. After that, the next thing we can do is we can make a return statement and we can do n and then we can do a plus and then a recursive call and then we're gonna do n minus one. So what that's gonna do is that we have a value, right? And we take that value and then we're gonna add it to the number below it. So let's say for example, we're gonna pass in a five to this method, right? So what we're doing is we're summing all the numbers from one to five, right? So what that's gonna be is one plus two plus three plus four plus five, and that is 15. Right? So a simple shortcut for that is you can just do five times five plus one, and then that entire product divided by two, and that equals 15. But really, my main point here is that one plus two plus three plus four plus five is the same thing as five plus four plus three plus two plus one. They're the same because of commutative property. Commutative property. So what is this? So five plus four plus three plus two plus one is pretty much the same thing as five plus five minus one, which is plus four minus one, which is plus three minus one, which is plus two minus one, and that's it. So that is kind of where we're getting this n minus one from, because what we're adding all the numbers below that number. So when we're summing all the numbers from one to a thousand, that's just one plus everything from 10,000, but it's actually 10,000 plus everything to one because they equal the same thing, commutative property of addition. So we're starting with 10,000, we're summing all the numbers below it other than zero because adding anything zero is the same thing. So we're stopping at one. So that's why the n minus one is there. And we made a recursive call to the n minus one because we're gonna repeat the method call for that number. So let's go ahead and make our method call in our main method. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna make this a sum of 10,000 and make that n, we're gonna make that 10,000. Okay, we'd go, let's run it. Where's the button? I'm so used to Eclipse. I'm like, where's the run button? But we're on VS Code, not Eclipse. So the run button's up here, not over there. Okay, so we got 5,000, 5,000. If you want to read that entire number, you can. 50 million, 5, 50 million, 5,000. I don't even know how to read that. <laughs> Pay, haven't been paying attention in school. Anyway, so that's our answer. And if you want to verify that, we can just use our shortcut which is 1,000 or 10,000 times 10,001, and then we can divide that entire product by two. And that should equal 5,000, 5,000. So hopefully that makes sense. This is our recursive method. So um, we can recheck if it's a recursive method, if it retains, if it contains our base case in a recursive case, and it does, this is our base case, and that's our recursive case. So we know that it's a recursive method because it contains both of those things. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's a recursive method. So I'm gonna go over it one more time. I'm doing this because I know and I understand that recursion is, it makes the code simpler, but I know that it is very difficult to understand at first. So I'm gonna go over it and nail it down one more time how this recursive method works. So in our method call right here, we're first gonna pass in a 10,000 to the method. Since 10,000 does not equal one, we're gonna to go to our recursive case. So that's gonna be 10,000 plus the sum of 10,000, and that's gonna be 9,999. And we're gonna keep on repeating that process. Let me make that a multi-line comment. And that there, there we go. 
and then you're just going to repeat that process. So 9,999 plus sum of 10,000, 9,998. And that's just, and that process is just going to keep on going all the way until you get to a sum of 10,000 of one. And when you pass in that one to the method, that's just going to return one. So it's going to add one all the way to 10,000. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, be sure to leave some questions in the comments down below. I understand that recursion is very difficult to grasp at first. So please don't be hesitant. Ask questions in the comments down below. I will answer them. And yeah, that's it. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time.